Howdy, welcome to my Friday reads. I feel like I said that very weird. But today, I'm going to be giving you all the books that I've read this week, all the books I'm going to be re reading this weekend and next week, and then also tell you new books that I bought, or I guess show you. I'm going to show you new books that I bought. And in fact, I'm going to show you the new books first, because I feel like that's a that's an exciting thing. Now, I guess let's start with the package I have already opened, because it wasn't a package. That is two books that I got from my local bookshop that's been closed for so long, and they actually started a Patreon thing where you could sign up and give like a few dollars a month and it would put money towards like your account credit you could use later and it's been great it's only a few dollars and now i have like 30 bucks to spend and i've got the first not the first what am i saying and there were none by agatha i got <clears throat> what the fuck is wrong with me agatha christie and i've actually heard really good things about this and i'm really excited to get to this i think it'll be really fun i was really happy when i found that edition it's really nice on their website and then another one I was really excited to find because a lot of the books at this bookstore are, they're used obviously, but they tend to be very obscure books, not really mainstream. So I was surprised when I found Mythos by Stephen Fry, the first of his set of, what do you call it? That thing, Greek mythology, Jesus Christ. And I'm really excited to get to that eventually. I have several Mythos stuff I need to read. And this package came in the mail. Um, hopefully it's not explosive because I don't remember ordering this. But then again, maybe I did. I've been ordering so many books lately, even though I know I shouldn't. But it's my birthday month, so I'm allowed to do that. So let's just let's open this. Jesus. Oh, yes. I do recall buying these two new <laughs> anthologies. I don't know why I'm buying anthologies when I still haven't read the ones that I already own, or even barely started them. First one is the Book of Magic, edited by Gardner... Dezevios, and I mostly had this because I thought the, the cover looked really beautiful, and I figured I could try short fiction of epic fantasy. Maybe I'll be able to get into it, and I like magic, therefore it seemed like a good place to go. There was one about swords I didn't want to get into because I don't really like sword fighting. Maybe that's not a good way of looking at it, but I did. So I'm excited to get to that. Um, and another one, a big book of science fiction edited by Anne and Jeff Vandermeer. I've got a couple other um, anthologies by them. Weird science fiction, which is almost like borderline horror, and then A Time Travels Almanac, which I've gotten through substantially for that one. But the weird science fiction I haven't started, but I have a new goal next year that I want to make a point to like leave space to read like five or six short stories um, or essays a month, like out of giant anthologies like this, in addition to the books that I'm reading. That way I'll be able to slowly get through these without making myself try to force through all of it like in one month because it's hard for me to get through the psychotomy of choosing books to read while making time for things that don't really fit this sort of monthly TBR dynamic which for the most part works for me. So I'm excited to have found these two. Really nice. This one is on audio. This one is not. Audio is obviously a lot easier for me to get through. And those are all the ones that I have. I have ordered other ones, but they're not in the mail, so I'll show you when they come in the mail. But for now, let's talk about the books that I've read, and then we'll talk about what I am reading and what I will be reading moving forward. So if you don't know, this was the first week of the Golden Girls Murder Mystery. And, uh, yep, I mean, it, I've enjoyed the books that I've read, so that's positive. I haven't felt very Golden Girly. <laughs> I tried doing a vlog for this, but I ended up not feeling it, so which is why I'm here. But I decided to at least do something fun and appreciate the beautiful weather and do an outdoorsy, kind of chilly or Friday read. So I hope you're enjoying the beautiful colors, even though the sun is dying slowly. So the first one that I've read, hmm, I did not bring it. I read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Which that was in conjunction to my Gothic and uh, Victorian fiction that I was reading for the month. But I mostly read that one as a, to precede this book, which is to say Frankenstein in Baghdad by uh, Amid Zadari. I should know his name, but they, they say it multiple times in the audiobook. And this one I enjoyed, but if I was being honest, I did enjoy Frankenstein by Mary Shelley more. I thought it was darker, even though this one is completely dark. And I, I also thought, thought it was creepier because it was more horrific to me, which I, I feel weird saying that because this is, <laughs> this is pretty gruesome war story. And, Interestingly, the, the Frankenstein in this it explores very similar ideas of right and wrong and the system of, um, I I'm doing a live show of this with Erica so she doesn't get too into it. it explores this idea of um, retaliation and at one point do you stop being the victim and become the, the monster. And it was a really interesting idea, but it never 
it never struck a chord as deeply as um, Barry Shelley's book. So that one was going to be four and a half. This will probably be four, I think. I'll go hopefully deeper in that with um, Erica on Sunday, which if you haven't seen, we're doing my first ever live show um, on my channel or otherwise. I was actually really hoping to reread this book just because I, I want to make sure I'm extra prepared, but I'm not sure that's going to happen. But uh, I will uh, say more about that once I get to the other two books that I've read. The next book that I've read, um, I actually read them all very together, but was Wild Seed by Octavia Butler. And this one thing I gave four and a half stars. I really liked this. I was very happy because while I really, really love, honestly, um, Parable of the Sower, it is a harder book to get through than, as far as writing style and the pacing than, say, um, Kindred. And this one is much more like that, which is just to say it's fast-paced. It is a book that is basically about witches, which I did not expect. I mean, witches, X-Men, X-People, I guess, um, is basically the feel I got here. This was set I thought set originally in the 1600s, but I read that it starts in the 1300s. I'm not sure how long we stay there because the, the novel moves very quickly from one point to the next um, throughout time. It's following this one woman who has this ability to shapeshift and heal herself as she is having this relationship and almost like a friend turn enemy, lover turn enemy, it's complicated with this other immortal person who isn't quite the same type of immortal and is very different. And it has this, deals with a lot, a lot of conversations about slavery and about ownership and about uh, eugenics. I'm basically saying things that I've read by other reviews. So there, there are more, there are better reviews out there for this. But I think if you really want a good discussion of this, I highly recommend um, checking out the Octavia Butler slow read discussion that will be happening in November, which is why I read this. But I'm really excited. It's almost like really bittersweet here because I really like this book. I was very happy to have liked it. It's also gorgeous. It goes really well with the background. I don't know why I'm so ecstatic talking about this, probably because I loved it. I'm, I'm bittersweet because the book was really good and I'm really excited to continue the series. Like Honestly, part of me wants to keep going, but I think I can withstand doing just one every two months. But at the same time, this is one of two series, sorry, one of three series, if you count the duology, that I have now started. And even though there are three books left in the series, I could easily see how quickly that's just going to fly by. And it's kind of bittersweet knowing that pretty soon I won't have any other books by her to read. And it's really kind of depressing, even though I'm still in the early stages. That's, that's what I tend to do. I tend to think about long term and how things tend to die and fade away in life. Life, if life is great, life sucks. That's how life works, right? Ah, uh, forgive my darkness, but uh, it really works well to get us into <laughs> the next one. Chili Jackson's A Rather Haunted Life. I thought I was gonna give this four and a half. Actually, for, first it was four, then four and a half. Now I have to give it a five star. I just, I can't. This book is so dense and in all the right ways. I mean, Jesus Christ, it's really what I wanted. I read last year the first memoir by Chili Jackson, uh, Life Among the Savages. And then this month, I, the beginning of the month, I read um, Raising Demons, which is her second one. And this is very different, but this was, this wasn't, what am I trying to say here? This was a very detailed account of her life, but at the same time, it, her life is told from the perspective of a literary criticism or analysis of her works. And that approach is fascinating, really fascinating, especially if you want to understand Shelley Jackson. This is probably one of the best autobiographies I've ever read, to be frank. I honestly would like to do a full review here for this, and I am thinking of doing that. Um, but let's just say that it was really good. It was really impactful. And the story, like, even though at first I had trouble getting into it just because it was so dense, but then once I did, it was like, I didn't want to stop. I, it just it was really good. It was a really well told story, and it's really easy to get lost. And this this conversation she's having, this analysis of, of Shirley Jackson, is really fascinating. Now, what I will say is that if you want to read this, you want to make it really sure that you read whatever books by her that you want that you want to eventually read before you read this. Um, with the exception of her memoirs, I think honestly you would benefit from reading this before her memoirs because her memoirs are kind of antiquated and outdated, and I think this gives a new insight into them. Insights that I, I thought were might be there, but that I wasn't quite confident of, and this sort of helps solidify and also improve that frame of way, which I was approaching and looking at her memoirs. I want to read all of her books and then come back and read this again. It was just really good. Now, it is sort of sad that she spoiled, the author I mean, spoiled every book for me. On the bright side, I'm very forgetful. And also, I'm not that um, upset about getting spoilers. I, I do think it will shape how I want to approach these books. Like, I think I'm going to go um, consecutively, but I've only read her lottery and, and short other stories in um, like lottery collection, I mean, and also The Haunting of Hill House. I have not read We Have Always Lived in the Castle, 
Now I'm really excited to do that because of all the praise and all the analysis we got in here. But also Sundial. Sundial is another one that sounds really fascinating. I think it's going to be really interesting. On the other downside though, the other stories now seem less uh, appealing to me. But I, I think it'll be really interesting to try and approach those and see how they seem um, from the framework of this book. But I, I just, I really love this book. It really was exactly what I wanted as far as getting a detailed look at her life. Like a really deep dive, sorry, a deep dive of that. And it was just phenomenal phenomenal book highly recommend if you have any interest in understanding her um and studying her yes fascinating book i'm really happy with that book now the next book that i've been reading i've actually just started is final cuts by ellen datlow the new tales of hollywood horror and other spectacles and this is an anthology i'm reading this one um Again, all these, all of these are for the, the Golden Girls Morning Mystery. And I've only like a story and a half in here, so I can't say much. What I will say is the second story I am loving. The first story was very slow. What I think the best thing I can say about this right now is that Ellen Datlow is a type of writer who will not give you just like mainstream horror, mainstream horror. Um, she'll give you a variety of different authors, the really creative stuff. And it's almost guaranteed that there'll be something you know, that you will like. But that how much of it you like could vary and how much you're willing to invest in a book that could have a variety of experiences is is up to you to decide i think it's worth it like the first book was really interesting analysis of not the first book the first story analysis of this classic film which was since destroyed and there's this person this one young girl who's coming to ask the original filmmaker or for someone in, involved in the film to help them understand why was the film destroyed what was so wrong with it like what what is it about the background of this film? And it was a very slow burn that kind of paid off in the end. I'm not as big a fan of like the slow burn. Like for the first three quarters of the story, even though it is a short story, um, it felt not like a, not like a horror story. I was like, is this just like general um, film fiction? Because it eventually came clear what it was, and it sort of paid off. I, I think I would have given that three stars. The second one so far, it's creepy and ominous, and I'm curious what's going to go. It's probably going to be a solid four stars at least. And whether or not it gets higher than that is going to depend. But I'm excited because I still haven't gotten to people like um, Josh Mallerman, um, Garth Nix, Stephen Graham Jones, and others here who's Ojima Files, who I've heard a lot about but haven't actually read. So I'm highly anticipating that. Speaking of Stephen Graham Jones, let's talk about what I'm reading next week. Now, this week was the first week of The Golden Girls Murder Mystery, and it extends into next week. And so these books I'm about to show you are books that I did talk about in my TBR, obviously, so you've probably already heard about them, but they have to fit that. And if you want to know how they fit it, I, um, I go all into that in my TBR. I'm not going to redo all the graphics here for that. But I'm also reading it for the Fortnite Frights as well as, what do you call it? Black SF Epithon. And incidentally, I also want to mention that I wasn't going to be trying to accomplish anything to do with Black Queen, but at this time, I've, I'm already doing all the tags, and I am still reading Black Authors, so I think actually I might take a look at that in the next few weeks and see what I can do to accomplish that, because obviously Wild Seed, I know already, counts as a book with witches, which is great, because I didn't think I'd be able to make it work, and it, that actually gets me a good step towards getting a, at least partly bingo on that little list. I can put that in here. So anyways, the books I'm reading, first one is Stephen Graham Jones. I'm really bad at transitions because I'm pretty sure I said speaking of Stephen Graham Jones, but this is a short story collection of his, and I don't know what to expect here. It's called After the People Lights Have Gone Off. That name really flows well, doesn't it? And all I will say is that there was at least one story in here I have read, and that was in Fearful Symmetries by Ellen Datlow, one of my favorites of Ellen Datlow, probably my favorite Ellen Datlow so far. And it was a, a book club reading the short, a short story about the devil, basically, from Stephen King. And someone very very similar to the devil seems to show up. It's really creepy, and I, as a Stephen King lover, or at least enthusiast, I really appreciate that story. I'm really excited to get into these. I feel like Stephen Graham Jones is like Ellen Datlow. There's a variety of shit that he gives us, and some hit, some don't all look really provocative next up the conjure woman by charles waddle chestnut and this is a classic that i'm reading for the fortnite frights and it might end up fitting into the other two some i don't remember i don't know much about this i just know it has to do i think with a classic religion of african-american women who came to america or brought to america and i chose to read this after reading the conjure women with an e um, back in March, uh, which was a really interesting book, and I really enjoyed it, which is why I wanted to learn more about that task. The book, another book that I'm reading, not necessarily in this order, whatever happens, happens. I might use a quantum number generator. My Soul to Keep by Canada Reeve Du. And this is a book that I've been wanting to read all year, honestly, and I've been wanting to read more Canada Reeve Du. 
also there's going to be like a kind of a buddy read going on with the Ashley from Bookish Realm I think Bree from Lockwitician Erica and 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 others I don't remember not necessarily a group read for everybody but they're doing a discussion about it so I'm kind of that's a group read and that's what I'm reading where are we at now 16 minutes that's actually not bad at all now all I have to do is get home it is cold a pumpkin jacket but at least it's beautiful outside the sunlight and the autumn really goes well with my beard look at that it's so nice I, I shade for y'all hope you appreciate that as always I hope y'all have a frightful Halloween and toodaloo